okay crossing the bar has been written by the prominent the famous poet alfred lord tennyson so tennyson was an english poet and he uh, has written a number of poems in his illustrious career a pretty long career given the fact he lived for around 80 years okay compare it to somebody like uh, john keats or percy shelley they are also famous poets poets but they hardly lived for 30 35 years okay so one of the advantages that lord tennyson had is that he had a pretty long career like william wordsworth the poet of daffodil remember so william wordsworth lord tennyson uh, they actually had a long career but on the other hand there are equally famous poets uh john keats percy shelley sylvia plath but they had a relatively shorter career because they died in their 30 okay one of them committed suicide one of them drowned in the sea uh, one of them got died because of uh, a disease now in this poem crossing the bar crossing the bar is a highly metaphoric poem bar literally means the sand bar or the divider between the sea and the shore the sea and the land the line of sand or the spray that divide the land and the sea in the literal sense that is called the bar or the sand bar okay now the poet says that we have to cross the bar when the time comes which means when the time comes you have you are on land or on shore when your time comes you have to cross that divider and go to the sea so metaphorically he means to say that we live on earth but after some time when our time comes when we can see the evening star when we can see the twilight of our life then we will have to cross the sand bar leave the safety and security of the shore and enter the enter the mysterious and the dark sea understood so the sand bar basically refers to the line of death or the divide between life and after life so when you die you cross the bar and you go to the mysterious dark infinite unknown sea understood when you are on the beach when you are on the sand shore on the sandy shore the geographical boundaries are known to you okay you are standing on a ground whose uh measurements are known to you you are familiar with the territory but when you enter the sea you step into or you sail into an unknown world because you do not know how deep the sea is you do not know how dangerous how how dangerous how deep how mysterious how dark the sea is understood we do not know what lies there inside the sea or far into the sea quite like death quite like after life life after death we are familiar with what is the mortal world we are familiar with our human life with our mortal life we know uh, what happens or what is there in our everyday world we are familiar with our everyday task we are familiar with the cycle of birth and growth marriage reproduction death we know that life span okay we are familiar with the different phases of a human life span what we do not know is what happens after we die so when you are on the shore that part has been compared to life or human life when you die you cross the sand bar and then you step into the unknown sea or you sail into the unknown sea 
okay now this poem is a personal poem which means the poet is basically talking about himself when he says that i can see the evening star and i can hear the bell i can see the evening star and i can hear the bell which bell the evening bell the evening star the evening bell i can see the twilight of my life so he is talking about himself because the poet when he is writing this poem he is almost <coughs> Okay, he is almost eight, maybe a year shy, seventy-nine or something. And this is one of his final poem. So the poet is indeed very old, and the poet is ready to embrace death. The poet says that the time has come for me to cross the bar and to go to the other side. But am I afraid of death? am i afraid of the sea the poet says it is true that the sea is a scary proposition the sea is not something which is inviting the sea is dark it is scary it is unknown yet i have full faith on my on my pilot okay pilot means the captain of the ship who will guide me so pilot refers to the christian god understood so he says that when i move into the sea the god will come in the shape of a pilot and he will guide me in the sea so that i do not uh i do not get drowned or i Stay safe, basically. So through this poem, the poet is also presenting his spiritual side. That the poet is a believer. He is a believer. There are three types of people. One is a believer in God. You call them Hindi me astic, and English me theist. English me theist. T H E I S. The other is non-believer, a Gnostic, atheist. Okay, right. Atheist is non-believer, and a hata do. So atheist is believer. And the third category is one who is neutral. One who is neutral, which means the person is neither a theist nor an atheist. The person says, "I am not sure." i am not sure whether god exists or not so that person takes a neutral view that person is called agnostic a g n o s t i c understood so if the question comes that uh, uh discuss how the poet presents himself as a believer or a theist so here your focus has to be in the last part when the poet says that i am not afraid of death i am not afraid of sailing into the sea because i believe that god will come in the shape of a pilot in the form of a pilot and god will guide me i have full faith in him so when he says that i have full faith in him it means that he believes in the existence of god he believes in the power of the supreme right and he is also referring to the bible because it is written in the bible that when you die god comes and guides you helps you navigate the the dangerous sea okay similar to what we found in the class 10 poem which poem the patriot remember the patriot no here no but here in that poem also the poem i remember the poet robert browning so robert browning also says in that poem i hope you remember me all robert browning also says that i have been misjudged by the people like they have remember that poem first he was welcomed like a hero and later after one year they threw stones at him and then he was executed he was hanged so he says that these people have 
not understood me but i have full faith in god that when the judgment day comes god will reward me so by saying this he is trying to present his faith in god so that part actually is similar because in that po- <coughs> in that poem as well robert browning <coughs> towards the end he says that god will come and reward me here also uh the poet says that even though when i die even though when i die i will uh, uh enter a territory which is unknown and deep and mysterious i am nervous but i am not afraid because i know that i will be assisted by god okay now look at the poem page number 16 now here you will find that there is economy of words okay economy of words means shortage of words you will find there is not even a complete line just look at the first line there are two important words sunset evening star the full line is not written the poet is not saying that i can see the sunset and evening star he is not using that full line he is using it economically in fact the entire poem you can see is a very short poem even the lines are very very short look at the third stanza also twilight and evening bell so he is not using the entire line he is not using the verb and the subject the poet is not using the full line i can see the twilight i can hear the bell he is cutting the word short okay so the poet says first stanza sunset and evening star i can see the sunset of my life i can see the evening star and i can hear one clear call and i can hear one clear call clear call for me so he is being called and may there be no morning of the bar when i put out to see underline this morning of the bar no morning of the bar it means no public outcry no public outcry or lamentation no public outcry or lamentation in brackets right he wants a peaceful farewell no public no public outcry outcry one word or lamentation we want lamentation l a m e n t a t i o n in brackets right he wants a peaceful farewell he wants a peaceful farewell no public outcry or lamentation okay in brackets he wants a peaceful farewell any questions sidan या मेरे में लिखा है 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 द साउंड क्रिएटेड व्हेन द सी वो 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 भी भी लिख लिख लो दैट इज़ अ अ लिटरल लिटरल मीनिंग मीनिंग ही वांट्स पीसफुल हियर एवरी लाइन हैज़ टू लाइक व्हाट इज़ द सनसेट मींस सन इज सेटिंग द लिटरल मीनिंग इज सनसेट मींस नॉर्मल सनसेट बट द मेटाफोरिक और फिगरेटिव मीनिंग इज दैट द लाइफ इज कमिंग टू एन एंड his life is coming to an end what is the meaning of twilight twilight means the end of day sandhya ke time ko bolte hai twilight sham ka time ekdam uh, the period after sunset but the figurative meaning is the very end of life the approaching death uh, twilight was like sun ka light hota hai sun chalaya tha usse rays bahar peep out karta tha that is twilight the period after sunset but not but before darkness that is twilight dusk dusk then when he says no moaning of the bar the literal meaning is that the sound of the the sound of water hitting the shore bar i told you is sand bar so moaning of the bar literally means the sound created by the you know when the waves pushes in and pushes out 
and it the sound made by the waves that brushes against the sand that is called the moaning of the bird the sound made by the shallow wave yaad rakho made by the shallow wave the shallow water not high tide the sound made by the low low tide or shallow water that brushes against the sandy shore that is the literal meaning of moaning sound of the sand bird but the figurative meaning is that the poet says when i die i do not want people to mourn i do not want my friends my readers my family to cry or to give me a sad face okay when i put out to sea so put out to sea means when i sail out to sea which means when i die second stanza or uh, the third is the second stanza loudly but the jet died as moving in the deep to full uh, full for sound and foam when that uh, which drew from out the boundless deep turns away but such a tide as moving seems asleep too full for sound and foam when that which drew out the drew from out the boundless deep turns again home now the first line means you will underline the first line it means just right sleeping tide or high tide sleeping tide or high tide high tide ha ah. high and sleeping tide which means quiet tide स्लीपिंग टाइट क्यों बोला जा रहा है उसको जब तुम सोते हो तुम आवाज तुम पीसफुली सोते हो राइट हाई टाइट भी आप बोल रहे हैं हाँ यही इसका मीनिंग है हाई टाइट साउंड नहीं करता इज एट अट मीन द टाइड इज स्ट्रॉन्ग इट द वेव कम इन एंड गो बैक विदाउट मेकिंग मच साउंड ओके लो टाइट क्रिएट मोर साउंड एंड मोर फोन अंडरस्टूड जब पानी कम होता है तो झाग भी ज्यादा होता है फोम का मतलब है झाग एंड द साउंड इज ऑल्सो मोर बट वेन द वॉटर इज वेरी फुल लुक एट द सेकेंड लाइन द वॉटर इज टू फुल टू क्रिएट एनी साउंड और फोम सो द पोएट सेज दैट वेन आई क्रॉस द बार एंड वेन आई गो टू द सी वेन आई सील इन टू द सी आई डो नॉट वॉन्ट टू डू दैट during low tide i wish to do that during the phase of high tide okay which means the when the tide is sleeping when it is not noisy understood so literally he is talking about uh, the phase of high tide at that point he wishes to cross the sand bar and enter the sea and see it is also logical logically when if you are a sailor or if you wish to embark on a journey okay you wish to start on a journey by boat when will you do that during high tide because low tide mein to boat how come again boat wahi rahega na pani nahi aayega yahan tak understood ha wo push out nahi kar payega so 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 literally he says that as a normal sailor he would move out during high tide when the sea water is very full and therefore it is convenient to sail out and also during that time the sound is less and the foam is less okay as opposed to the phase of high low tide during low tide the sea water is uh like less dense less voluminous therefore it creates more sound and more foam more dirt okay so he says i do not wish to go during the low tide because during the low tide there will be a lot of noise understood now in the figurative sense he says that i do not wish to go uh in the middle of 
too much crowd or too much noise i wish to go quietly silently in a sleeping way so please give me a quiet farewell do not make a halabali do not make a sound do not make a uh, too much noise do not give me a noisy farewell hmm. the ha the exit like when people are giving him the farewell they should not cry over his uh, uh death and he gives the reason in the next line he says that the reason is that at that point what will happen the soul that has come from the boundless deep the soul my soul that has come from the boundless so from some other world from some other deep boundless world from some unknown world that soul will return home understood through this line the poet is trying to emphasize that death is not going away death is not going away death means going back understood difference death is not going away death means going back to your home so poet ye bolna cha raha that i my soul has come from some other place and death is simply homecoming of the soul therefore death should be celebrated and not lamented so do not lament or moan or cry over my death do not cry do not grieve rather give me a quiet send off give me a peaceful and a happy send off because my soul that has come from some boundless deep place from some unknown realm is going back home understood so look at the second stanza again but such a tide as moving seems asleep too full so the tide is too full for sound and foam means the high tide is too full to create any sound or foam when that so that means soul of the person figurative meaning is soul of the person you can underline that and write soul s o u l soul human soul that is the figurative meaning okay human soul so when the human soul which drew from drew means came which came from out of the boundless deep turns again home these are written in the notes also which i have sent you i will be discussing that also ye sab likha hua hai uska that the poet is basically presenting death as a homecoming of the soul death is basically the event a momentous event when the soul returns to its true home original home understood third stanza sidhan read the third stanza loudly well i am evening bell and after that the dark and may there be no sadness of farewell when i embark so in the third stanza he says nothing new as you can see it is basically a reiteration of what he had said earlier he once again says twilight i can see the twilight now now what is the difference between the first stanza and third stanza in the first stanza he uses the word sunset and here he uses the word twilight so uh, uh, what is the difference between evening and twilight i mean sunset and twilight sunset is jab sun dikhta hai so twilight is the more later phase sun nahi dikhta lekin sun dikhta hai which means yeah. sunset means sun abhi sham hua hai but twilight ka matlab hai sham bhi beet chuka hai raat hone wala hai so twilight yeah. ha twilight basically is a more uh, urgent word that now i can now even the sun has gone now i can see the twilight of my life ab to mera death aa hi gaya hai that basically is a uh, signaling a more faster approach of death and i can even hear the bell i can even hear the evening bell the bell that is calling me aa jao come back come back 
and after that the dark so dark basically refers to the dark or dark see the uncertain after life underline this and write underline dark and write uncertainties of after life uncertainties of after life after life is one word so dark refers to the uncertainties of the next world the after life so he says after this what i will face the dark i will face the dark world the uncertain world and may there be no sadness of farewell i do not want people to be sad when i embark embark means begin a new journey embark means write down those who do not know begin a new journey begin a new journey now this word is also important why we normally associate death as end what is death we say aadmi khatam ye to bolte hain is tarah bolta aadmi shuru samajh gaye we say the man is finished his life is end finished life is ended so we use negative way we use negative words to depict death death is depicted in a negative way. but the poet is presenting death in a positive way by using the word embark that death means beginning ek nayi shuruaat i embark on the journey i begin a new journey as my soul uh, moves to go back to its original house original home fourth stanza uh fourth stanza uh did i read loudly fourth stanza for do for do from out are born of time and place the food may bear flood the flood may may bear me far i hope to see my family face to face when i have crossed the bar okay in the last stanza just uh, give an arrow and write the uh, right there uh, beside this stanza <coughs> this stanza this stanza presents the this stanza presents the spiritual belief of the poet this stanza present the spiritual belief b e l i e f s now e f s of the poet this stanza presents the spiritual belief of the poet now the reason why i am saying this is because even though i have given you the entire summary also and a few short questions also if the question specifically comes for let us say four five marks or six marks that talk about the spiritual beliefs of the poet so your focus will be on this stanza it does not mean you will not refer to the previous stanzas but the main focus is going to be this stanza okay and now depending on the marks we elaborate i have given you one question like that also now the poet says here that when i cross the bar okay so when i die basically the flood or the sea water will carry me far it will carry me deep somewhere deep and far into some other world which will be beyond the boundary of my current time and place okay like basically don't we say when if you to travel to space if you go to some other galaxy so tum apna yahan ka we will like go beyond our present understanding of time and space maybe in some other galaxy there is a different uh, uh movement of time like time behaves in a different way in some space movies they show that uh, uh like there was a movie called interstellar in that movie it is shown that uh, a man who has a small daughter that man goes into 
goes for an intergalactical travel. He goes into some other galaxy. Okay, and then he returns. And then he returns. Yes, goes through a wormhole and then he returns. So he does that in a period of a few months. So वो जब आता है तो वो उतना ही है but लड़की बुरी हो चुकी है the daughter has turned very very old which means that he has remained the same he has maybe grown by six months or one year but his daughter has lived her entire life on earth from a child she has become a very very old woman understood which means that so science believes and so does uh, like uh, philosophy or spiritual science that it is possible that when you go to some other world okay in terms of science when you go to some other galaxy and in terms of uh, uh, in terms of philosophy or spiritualism if you die which means when you die you go to some other realm of life which is unknown to us you go to some other world you are no longer a mortal being maybe you will go beyond the boundary of time and place so the first line for though from out our bone bone means boundary or limit boundary or limit from out of the boundary of time and place the flood may bear me far ye hai full line read this till here so maybe the flood the sea will carry me into a world that has a separate concept of time and place i will leave the boundary of our current time and place maybe i will go so far into such a world where the current time and current place will not matter means i will go to a very very uncertain world i will go to a different world where i will have no understanding of how to live it is obviously a very scary proposal and then he says yet i hope to see my pilot so he is pining his hopes on pilot underline pilot and write god that is why p is capital okay the capital p in pilot uh is because he is uh, referring to almighty or god so crossed is ha i'm telling so he says he is pining his hopes on god that god will come and he will have a face to face encounter with god when he is making the journey so even though the flood will carry him far away into some unknown mysterious dark unknown world still he has full faith in his pilot or god who he will uh, meet face to face and the pilot or god will guide him and steer his ship in the right direction okay when i have crossed the bar when i have crossed the sand bar now the word crossed c r o w s e d has been written as c r o s t that is because of poetic liberty poets often take a liberty because they want to write in a particular meter means length hota hai ek sentence ka okay syllable bhi hota hai understood syllable or meter so the poet does not want to make it cross because then it will sound different so he has used the poetic liberty and spelled it uh, as crossed the bar now look at the uh take out the notes i had given you uh this is the summary i'm reading out crossing the bar by Alfred Lord Tennyson reinforcing the theme of life death and an afterlife poet alfred lord tennyson envisions envisions means 
टू पिक्चर टू इमेजिन इमेजिन विजन मतलब क्या होता है इमेजिन तो एंड विजन मीन्स टू विजुअलाइज टू पिक्चर और इमेजिन सो द पोएट एंड विजन और इमेजिन हिज जर्नी आफ्टर डेथ बट इमेजिन वर्ड यूज मत करना यूर इन क्लास इलेवन ट्राई टू यूज बेटर वर्ड एंड विजन मीन्स का मतलब समझो विजन वर्ड मतलब क्या होता है विजन मतलब दृष्टि ओके सो एंड विजन मीन्स देखना वर्ब है to the poet envisions or imagines his journey after death in the process he imbues the poem with strong christian belief so poem mein wo christian belief ko imbue karta hai means mix karta hai dalta hai he inserts the uh, he mixes the poem with strong christian belief that there is a pilot at the other end to supervise his transition transition means change when the poet is going to make a transitory journey from one life to another life from one world to another world so jo transition hai wo jo journey hai usme there will be a supervisor there will be the pilot to help him the poem opens up with metaphoric terms like sunset and evening star which signify ye kya signify kar raha hai the inevitable end of life for the poet inevitable, inevitable means jo hona hi hona hai unavoidable jaise har din ka ant hoga every day will have a sunset sunset is inevitable hoga hi hoga similarly every life has got an end death is inevitable death cannot be avoided हाँ जिसको रोक नहीं सकते ओपन सब मतलब बिगिन जो फर्स्ट लाइन है वो क्या है सनसेट एंड इवनिंग स्टार तो द पोएट बिगिन विद सनसेट एंड इवनिंग स्टार विच सिग्निफाई द इनएिटेबल एंड ऑफ लाइफ फॉर द पोएट ही गेट्स अ क्लियर कॉल दैट इज अ डिस्टिंक्ट रिमाइंडर और अ विजन दैट ही हैज रीच द एंड ऑफ इज लाइफ एंड मस्ट क्रॉस ओवर to the other side okay next para in figurative sense the poet is stranded it is s t r matlab wo atka hua hai he is stranded on the shore of life like i told you the shore or the beach is our life jahan pe hum log atke hue hain tum samjho poet ye bolna cha raha hai ki hamari aatma koi aur jagah se aayi hai aur tum yahan pe dharti mein atke hue ho और वापस लौट के जाना है समझ गए द पोएट इज सेंग दैट द पोएट इज स्ट्रैंडेड ऑन द शोर ऑफ लाइफ एंड ही मस्ट क्रॉस द स्टैंड बार टू यूनाइट विद द इनफाइनाइट एंड इनफाइनाइट एंड मिस्टिकल सी ही होप्स दैट देर विल बी नो मोलफुल साउंड ऑफ सी वे ब्रेकिंग अगेंस्ट द स्टैंड बार वेन ही सेट्स आउट टू द सी सो ही यर्न desires to sail out to the sea on a high tide which he poetically labels as being asleep for it is silent and still so high tide is silent and still that is too full of water that is too full of water to create sound or foam if the tide is high then the waves won't break over the sand bar and his journey from shore to sea from life to death would be a placid and peaceful one so this journey will be a placid one a calm one the lines when that which drew from out the boundless deep turns again home can have dual implications so this line can have double meaning dual means double implication means meaning here that may literally refer to the tide which rushes in from the boundless sea and then returns into its infinite folds so literally that ka matlab hai the sea water or the tide jo dur se aaya hai aur wapas laut jayega apne boundless sea ke andar but metaphorically speaking the word that may also allude to or refer to the poet's soul 
which having lived its mortal life is returning to its true home okay next para the poet returns to the metaphors of twilight and evening bell injecting a sense of urgency so the poet is injecting a sense of urgency with which with which the dark or death is uh approaching however he does not want anybody to mourn or lament his departure death because although the flood will carry him beyond the limits of time and space he is optimistic optimistic means positive positive hopeful wo negative nahi hai uska mind hopeful hai positive hai he is optimistic of witnessing the face of his pilot once he has crossed the bar so the poet is positive that he will meet his god finally here the capital p in pilot makes it apparent that the poet is alluding to or referring to almighty who has steered the poet's ship throughout his life and now will do so in his journey to the afterlife the darkness he is heading towards signifies the unknown and the inexplicable world he is sailing to so darkness darkness ka matlab hai wo andhera wala world jisme wo ja raha hai which is dark and inexplicable okay inexplicable means something that cannot be explained inexplicable means unexplainable world jiska hame koi answer nahi pata ki wo world kaisa hai so perhaps there is an element of uncertainty and fear aur uske baad arrow dekh ke likha hua hai and the poet admits that the flood may uh, bear me far yet the poet has faith in the divine and is hopeful of coming face to face with god in brackets i hope to see my pilot face to face आंसर because it means that uh, you are not going beyond the text it is written in the book that is what the meaning of quote is then look at uh, a few question answers that i have sent or uh, in the same file you will find so these are actually short questions means uh, part questions one second question 1 how does tennyson see death as a homecoming in the poem answer alfred lord tennyson regards death as a homecoming rather than a departure according to him death is not something to be mourned at but something to be celebrated this is so because after death the soul turns again home quite clearly tennyson alludes to means refers to christian belief which talks about the concept of life after death this question is of around 3 mark 4 marks agar zyada marks ka so you can add a bit here if it comes for more than 4 5 more 4 marks so answer is this thoda aur add kar dena just from summary question 2 discuss how the poem offers a spiritual discourse a spiritual discourse means a spiritual uh, lecture or lesson on the aftermath of life means kaise ye poem ek spiritual side bhi leta hai answer 
the poem crossing the bar is the poet's personal vision of death portrayed through the metaphor of a sea voyage a sea journey in this highly symbolic poem the poet suggests that after death one needs to cross the bar and sail out into the dark and uncertain sea however the poet does not associate death with grief or fear so poet ye nahi keh raha ki death matlab daro ya dukh manao he is not associating death with fear or grief double quotes and may there be no moaning of the bar when i put out to sea through these lines the poet encourages one to cross the bar without sadness or despair okay despair means sorrow hopelessness he asks the world not to lament his departure alluding to death as homecoming the poet's thoughts reflect christian ideology when he declares ideology means belief the christian belief when he declares that he hopes to meet god during his voyage the poet believes that his pilot or god will be his divine guide once he has crossed the bar again double quotes i hope to see my pilot face to face when i have crossed the bar in this way the poem can be labeled a philosophical as well as a spiritual discourse so poem is not only philosophical but also a spiritual lesson or a spiritual discourse question 3 discuss crossing the bar as an elegy elegy means a death poem a poem that is about death but most elegies are actually sad poem which talks about the death of a friend or something but here it is a it is a death poem but it talks about death in a positive way so discuss crossing the bar as an elegy answer an elegy is a poem of loss and lamentation elegies are usually written after the death of a person out of love and honor for the deceased for the deceased means for the dead person elegies are also regarded as a negative poem okay elegies are normally negative poem because they offer a pessimistic view of life they offer a negative or a sad view of life inundating the reader means uh, flooding the reader with a sense of grief and loss crossing the bar is an elegy in the sense that it is concerned with the subject of death alfred lord tennyson can witness the sunset and evening star and hears one clear call the poet uses the metaphor of the sandbar as death and the metaphor of the sea as the afterlife so tennyson's poem is indeed an elegy acha slash ka matlab hai para change karna wa theek hai so change para however instead of presenting a pessimistic view of death the poet offers an optimistic view of it according to the poet death is akin akin matlab similar akin to homecoming so death is similar to homecoming and so it must be celebrated in the poem the poet glorifies death instead of presenting it as a lamentation so poet says ki ro mat death pe usko glorify ya celebrate karo imbuing death with faith the poet asks the reader to look forward to death instead of dreading it or fearing it dreading means dread means fear okay dreading means fearing so do not fear death so we can conclude that even though this poem can be called an elegy it is an unconventional elegy it is not a normal elegy okay conventional ka matlab hai normal and unconventional means something out of normal out of ordinary it is not an ordinary elegy it does not talk about death in the sense of sorrow or grief it talks about death in the sense of positivity so it is an unconventional elegy which takes a positive approach to death 
okay so any kind of question comes uh these notes will be sufficient uh, any kind of question comes question can come in a different way but these notes will help you survive okay these notes will, will help you cross the bar during the exam hall <laughs> okay please ye sara notes copy kar lena ya print out kar lena but please make sure that full full notes ready hona chahiye hard copy mein do not wait till the annual exam sir can press the date here